please hit that subscribe button. Hey, everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked on and he scores! And we're live. Hey, everybody. So I am really happy to announce that I am starting a new series called Hit or Miss, where I will be going through NHL teams' first round draft picks from 2005 through 2015 and determining whether that pick was a hit or that pick was a miss. Now, this is going to be a really fun series, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, over the next month or so, I hope to do one of these videos for every team in the NHL. Um, I didn't think it was worth doing sooner picks than 2015 because those guys are still developing and we don't have a final answer on a lot of those players yet. So it's going to be first round picks from 2005 to 2015. Are they a hit or are they a miss? Uh, I th what better team to start with than the Edmonton Oilers for this? Um, I figured, you know, a team that's had so many high picks over the years and some that have worked out, some that haven't. I thought Edmonton would be a great place to start. Before we get into it, I just quickly ask that you hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. To, uh, really, both, both of those things really, really help out the channel a lot and are very much appreciated. But let's get into it now. Starting with 2005, 25th overall draft pick for the Edmonton Oilers was forward Andrew Cogliano, who has gone on to play 1,012 career games, scoring 165 goals, uh, 234 assists, 399 points, and a plus 40 career rating. Andrew Cogliano has had a long and successful NHL career as kind of a middle of the lineup type player. Never became a superstar or anything like that, but for a late first round pick, 25th overall, Cogliano's had a very good career. He's been around the league for a long time. He's played for Edmonton, he's played for Anaheim, he's in Dallas now. Um, he's been a really, really solid secondary depth type player throughout his career, and this pick was absolutely a hit. Um, anytime you draft someone that plays over a thousand career games, that's an automatic hit right there. Cogliano's been a very good forward throughout his career. In 2006, the Edmonton Oilers did not have a first round pick, so we jump immediately to 2007 where they had actually three first-round picks in 2007. The first one being six overall, where they took Sam Gagne, uh, a forward who went on to play 844 career games, scoring 164 goals, 295 assists for 459 career points and a minus 125 rating. Obviously, that bad plus-minus comes from playing on really bad teams for much of his career. This is an interesting one. This is a borderline hit or miss here because he went. Out, he played over 800 games. He had over 450 career points, but this was a top 10 draft pick. And when you are drafting in the top 10, you're not just looking for an NHL player. You're not, ju not just looking for somebody who has a, a solid NHL career. You're looking for a franchise-changing player in the top 10, somebody who becomes a great, important, impact player for your franchise. And can't really say that Sam Gagne had a career, you know, he was never really a high, high-end player. You know, he over, you know, not even 500 points in his career, over 800 games played. He stuck around as a long time for a long time, but many of those were as a third-line type player. Um, I'm going to go with a miss on that one, just because Sam Gagne had a good career, but wasn't a, you know, looking back, a top 10 pick worthy type player. Their next pick in 2007 was 15th overall, and they took defenseman Alex Plant with that pick, and he only played 10 career NHL games, scoring no goals, two assists, two points, and a minus one rating. That's an obvious miss right there. Um, he never even really had much of an NHL career, so that's a big miss. And then their 21st overall pick, they took forward Riley Nash, who has gone on to be a pretty solid depth player in the NHL, playing 541 games, scoring 61 goals, 104 assists, 165 points, and a minus 5 rating. He's still in the league with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And late first round pick, over 500 career NHL games. Uh, over 150 career points. I'm going to call this one a hit. Um, Riley Nash, you know what? 
This isn't like they took Riley Nash in the top 10. This is a late first round pick, 21st overall, and he's actually gone on to be a pretty solid depth player in a third or fourth line role throughout his NHL career that is still continuing and going on. So I'm going to say that that's a hit because he's had a pretty solid career in the NHL. He's been a regular in the NHL for a number of seasons now. And when you're drafting in the late first round, if you end up with somebody who, who at least has a good NHL career, whether it's a depth player or not, um, that's that's pretty much a hit. 2008, the uh, Oilers selected 22nd overall, and with that pick, they selected right wing Jordan Eberle. This one's a hit, guys. Obviously, Eberle now with the New York Islanders, still a really good goal scorer, good player. He's played 724 games to this point, scoring 225 goals, 293 assists for 518 points and a minus 48 rating. This is an obvious hit. Um, Eberle's turned into a really, really solid top six winger. 2009, they had the 10th overall pick, and with that pick, they selected left wing Magnus Pajarvi who went on to play 467 career games, scoring 62 goals, 62 assists, 124 points, and a minus 54 rating. This one was a miss. Top 10 pick, and you get a player who is never anything more than a depth guy in anyone's lineup. He spent most of his time with St. Louis. Um, just never really did, turned into that score that people thought he was going to. I mean, he played over 460 games, but he only had 62 goals and 62 assists. Um, the, for a top 10 pick, again, when you're picking in the top 10, you're looking for a, a impact player, somebody who comes in and plays an important role, a top 6 role or a top 4 defenseman. Uh, an important role in your lineup, and Magnus Pajarvi was a depth player at best at the NHL level, and um, then uh, now has moved on uh, away from the NHL and is not even in the league anymore. So that one is a miss. 2010, the Edmonton Oilers get a f their first first overall pick in a string of three of them, and with that pick, they select left wing Taylor Hall, and that hit, that was a hit. Taylor Hall. Arguably is the best player to come out of that draft. Certainly one of the three best players to come out of that draft. In 627 career games played, he's got 218 goals, 345 assists for 563 points and a minus 42 rating. Uh, that was pretty much the best Edmonton could do with that pick. Um, he was a consensus number one um, basically around the league. Edmonton took him, and he's gone on to have a good NHL career. He's a big-time goal scorer. He has won an MVP award. He had a 93-point season a couple years ago, um, and Taylor Hall was a hit with that pick. In 2011, they had another first round pick, another, excuse me, first overall pick in the first round. And with that selection, they took forward Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Now, Ryan Nugent Hopkins has had, this is another borderline hit or miss here. This, Ryan Nugent Hopkins still with the Oilers, still a good player, um, a, a second line type player for them. He's played six, uh, Let's see. Hang on here. Let me get this right. He's played 604 career games played. He's got 169 goals, 274 assists for 443 career points and a minus 44 rating. Now, Nugent Hopkins has never become the superstar that you want to select with a top three pick. When you're picking in the top three, that is supposed to be a, a massive superstar player, a franchise changing player. Nugent Hopkins hasn't really become that. What he has become is a very solid second line player who can play center, who can play wing, or and has been a good player, a really good player in the Oilers lineup. But he hasn't necessarily been one overall good. So this one, this one's a little tough. I, I'm right on the fence with this borderline. Is Nugent Hopkins a hit or a miss at one overall? I would say if he was ninth or 10th overall, this would absolutely be a hit. But at one overall, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I don't know. 2011 wasn't a great draft overall, though. So it's not like the Oilers had a ton of options here. You know what? Nugent Hopkins has had a good career. We're going to go right on the line with a hit on that one. He's been a good player for them. Uh, maybe not one overall worthy, but 2011 was not a great draft, and Nugent Hopkins has had a pretty good career. Um, moving on now, they also had the 19th overall pick in 2011, and with that pick, they selected defenseman Oscar Clefbaum. 
Uh, Oscar Kleffbaum has gone on to become a very important defenseman in the in the lineup for the Oilers. He's still with the Edmonton Oilers. He's played 378 career games played, 34 goals, 122 assists, 156 points at a minus 64 rating. Uh, pretty good numbers for a defenseman. He's a top four guy for them. 19th overall, that is definitely a hit for the Edmonton Oilers. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, give Oscar Kleffbaum a, a hit there. 2012, this is going to be a fun one, guys. Their third first overall pick in a row. And with that first overall pick, they select right wing Nail Yakupov, who I don't even think we need to go into the numbers here. Massive miss. One of the biggest draft busts of all time. And this is why I, I'm call you know, a reason I want to call Ryan Nugent Hopkins a hit. Because even though he hasn't necessarily been a superstar like most number one overall picks go, uh, Nugent Hopkins has at least had a good NHL career. It could have been worse. Nail Yakupov has been, was a complete bust, a complete waste of a draft pick. He only played 350 games in his career, 20 scoring, uh, 62 goals, 74 assists for 136 points, and a minus 89 rating. He did not last very long in the NHL. He was only given a f he was given plenty of chances. He was given a few years to become a worthy of being a top draft pick. Um, he, it never happened. He was horrible defensively. Never put up the points offensively that he was expected to. And was quickly, Edmonton was quickly done with him, and then he was quickly out of the league thereafter and went back to Europe. Uh, Nail Yakupov, a massive miss, one of the worst draft picks and one of the worst draft busts of all time. 2013, Edmonton had the seventh overall pick, and with the seventh overall pick, they selected defenseman Darnell Nurse. Now, Darnell Nurse has played 350 career games, scoring 29 goals, 92 assists for 121 points and a minus 7 rating. Darnell Nurse was a hit at number 7 overall. He's been a good defenseman for them. He plays a top 4 role. Um, he's still young. Uh, he's still, you know, developing, but has been in the league for a few seasons now, and he's become a really, really solid defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he's tough. He's physical. He can chip in offensively with 121 points in 350 games. Not bad for a D-man. Uh, he plays well, you know, in his own own zone when he's not turning the puck over, which is one of the biggest issues remaining with Darnell Nurse is the turnovers. But for the most part, he's a really solid defenseman for them, and uh, he's be, he's been a good pick at number seven there. 2014, third overall. Edmonton gets the third overall pick in 2014, and with it, they select forward Leon Drysaddle, and. Obvious hit here, no, no question. 422 games played, 168 goals, 254 assists for 422 points. So a point per game for Leon Drysaddle in his career, minus 24 rating. But literally the front runner for the MVP in the NHL this season, Leon Drysaddle was a massive hit. And 2015, you already know it, we have a massive hit again. Connor McDavid, center, first overall, 351 games played, 162 goals, 300. 107 assists, 469 points, and a plus 43. I mean, generational player in Connor McDavid. Um, the best player in the league, in my opinion, right now. Um, just obviously massive, massive hit there. So, so there you have it, guys. First episode of Hit or Miss, looking at the Edmonton Oilers' first round picks from 2005 through 2015. We saw some hits. We saw some misses. I think you're going to see that for most teams. Uh, nobody is perfect in drafting. And uh, actually, drafting in the NHL is pretty difficult. A lot, of, uh, a lot of picks end up not working out, while other picks end up working out really, really well. But uh, th that's it for Episode 1, guys. We're definitely going to be doing more teams here over the next month or so. Definitely going to be looking to add to this series. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.